Hello and welcome to The Love Talk, where we confront myths and misinformation about relationships. Where couples and singles learn to love intelligently. Some say he who learns with his own mistakes is smart, but he who learns with the mistakes of others is wise. And that's why today we will explore the story of Etiandro Elisandra, who shared with us a very interesting story, um, events that they went through, which prove very well this theory. And the nice thing about their story is because usually in one program we can't cover many topics, usually it's one or two, but through their story and some mistakes they made, we can mm -hmm. actually cover quite yeah. a bit of topics that we'll can be help able you. To, to cover a lot of topics and help you all. So then let's go straight into the story. Hello, my name is Lissandra Jr. and I've been married now for four years, and um, it's my husband. <laughs> Hello, my name is Etiandro Jr. I'm from Manchester, and we are married for four years. My life, in particular going, growing up, was a very nice childhood in a lovely family, and everything was fine. So, but when my brother was born, so then I, I saw that there was a need for me to start competing for my father's attention and love. So that's when my, <laughs> my journey in learning about relationships, if I can say that, started. So, but everything was, you know, I lived with my grandparents together, my, m my mom and dad. So it was very, a, a lovely home to be, and then, you know, very nice experiences as a, as a child. So in my case, uh, my childhood was how can I say it? Because my parents, they used to work a lot. And me and my brother, we used to, we grew up like in, not in this, like closer with my, my parents because they used to work so hard to give the best for us. Even though we have everything, like in that time, like uh, video games or, or games, and whatever we have in the, in the house. But my parents, they was so, so hard worker. So they wasn't there for us like 24 seven. So different upbringing, we could say, right? Uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you see that a lot of the problems in people's relationships today start exactly there. Mm -hmm. People think it's the past things, experiences that they had in the past, but it, it brings a lot um, to any relationship. You see, she, had a loving childhood. She had her parents, her grandparents, and Etiandro, although he had his parents at home, they worked a lot, so they weren't really mm -hmm. at home. So you see now how later on in life, when they came together, sometimes they can't understand each other. Similar to what we, we, we discussed in the last program, Indeed. right? Which was the, the, the different uh, baggage that people bring into a relationship. So Etiandro, um, had his parents around, but they were not so involved. On the other hand, we have Lisandra, whose parents were around and very much involved. When they came together, so they, they had a, some, some difficulty to adapt, to adjust to each other because of that. And, 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 and this is important for you to understand because it, it, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. It's very difficult for you to find a man and a woman who have a similar or equal or the same upbringing. It's almost impossible. Uh, I think that's part of the theory of, of the soulmate, yeah. right? It doesn't exist. So it's important that you're ready to adapt, to adjust, to learn with each other and learn uh, uh, with each other and help each other. When that, when, when that happens. The way it usually goes is in their case, for example, it's like this. My goodness, he never gives me any attention. Why can't he give me attention? Why doesn't he see that I need his presence? And he, on the other hand, because he was never used to that, he goes, why does she need so much attention? You know, I'm fine by myself. So it's not that they do it on purpose. It's just that that's what you're used to. That's all you know. And like you said, if you're not ready to adapt, this thing that is very small, can cause actually a huge problem in so the relationship. So they, 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 they 
They learned with somebody else. She learned the right way. He learned the wrong way. As we said in the beginning of the, of the program, uh, learning with your own mistakes makes you smart. But learning with somebody else's mistakes makes you wise. So they learn with somebody else's mistakes, especially him, for example, seeing you know that the parents were not very much involved. So now what he had to do, he had to adapt. She didn't because she learned well. She had you know good role models, but in his case it was a bit different. So he needed to be willing to adapt, and she needed to be willing to help him. Yeah, and that's how it, it works. Yeah, she couldn't put the, the the burden on him and say, "Listen, that's not how it's supposed to be. My parents were not like that. I was untreated that way. Therefore, you have to change. You have to do something and put the burden on her, on him. Pardon me. No, she had, or whoever is going through that today, the person must be the husband or the wife, be willing to help, and the other be willing to be helped. Yeah, understand that they are different, why they are different, because if they don't do that, then one demands from the other and they get nowhere. That's right. So let's continue watching. So and because of this, of course, when I achieve like, uh, let's say 16, 17 years old. So because of the problem that my parents, they was around all the time when I need them. Uh, that's why I affect my life. So and I started in doing like wrong things because of this. I started going parties, uh, going clubs. I started drinking when I was 16. And this was affecting actually. And then because of the result of going party, drinking all the time, I was arguing with my parents because the moment that I need them, they wasn't there. Of course, that was working, trying to bring the best for us. By that moment, there's a few things that I need my parents around, but they wasn't there. So I need to go to friends or to cousin. So I was 15, 16 years old in college. So I had a friend, they used to drink, they used to go to party. So in my case, I mean, in my mind it was like normal. In that age, like 16, 17, it's normal for you to go to parties. My parents, they wasn't like around and say, no, don't do this, don't do that, because this is not for you, this is not for you. So I was listening to the friends in college, say, no, this is normal. So in our age, we have to go party. We have to enjoy the life like they say. So that's why I started going, going to a wrong direction, like starting party, drinking, and then of course in clubs, there is a female, like became a womanizer. It was terrible because my cousins, my uncles, they, at that time they was married, but I saw them, even though they was married with the family, they used to have a lot of uh, girls outside, outside the marriage. So in, in my mind, it was normal. Seeing this, okay, in my mind, they say, okay, I'm a man, I have to be like them. Because even though they're married, older than me, it's they, if they have another relationship outside of marriage, so that means it's normal. So, and then I started, uh, like, going to relationship, like, nothing serious, like, for a month, for weekly, in clubs, woman that you're meeting today, in a week time, you're dating. So it was, it was terrible, it was crazy. So, um, <clears throat> here we see um, a problem that um, happens all the time. Many families, I wouldn't say most because I can't judge every family, but many families where there is a lack of role models. Mm. And, and perhaps we could even uh, direct this message now to parents, right? Mm -hmm. Husbands and, and wives, uh, singles, but also parents. Uh, what kind of role model did Etiandro have? Had, pardon. Me. What kind of role model did he have? He, he, as we mentioned previously, his parents were there. They were not divorced. They're not separated, but they were not so present mm -hmm. to the point of molding him into perhaps a good future husband or you know a good and decent man. So he began to look elsewhere. So I see my uncles, I see my cousins, I see all the men behaving such a way. So that's what perhaps relationship is all about. So, I mean, what kind of man would you expect him to become if not 
you know, womanizer, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, you know, completely uh, oblivious to what a, a, a genuine relationship is all about. Clueless. Clueless, because that's the reference he had. It's that thing that we're always saying here. People think that when it comes to relationships, it happens. You know. You know. It's not like that. You only know what you've seen. So if you've never seen what a happy marriage is, you don't know what a happy marriage is. So how can you make one? <laughs> you don't know how it's made. In, ca in his case, although he had good intentions, he wanted to be happy, everybody wants to. That's but what he knew. What to expect from him. So uh, what was his reference? A, a, a group of men who perhaps did not have also good role models around them, um, that was his reference, or they, they have one girlfriend today, tomorrow they have another. Uh, they keep a relationship for a while, then change for a, a, another one. Uh, sorry, they keep a woman for a while, then change for another one. Uh, they have one relationship with one here, and over there, another relationship with a different woman. So then this man goes into or supposed to have a decent, good relationship with a, with a woman who perhaps, you know, is the one, mm. he's gonna mess it up. Because what does he know? So that's what he's being carried with him. So um, if, if, if that's you, you're watching us now and you say, I did not have a good referential. Um, my parents or those who I grew up with, um, you know, molded me in who I am today. So what do I do? What you have to do is uh, mold yourself after those who have a successful relationship because I, I, I guarantee you that you might be surrounded by people who have good relationships. It's impossible. That right? no one. That no one around you is successful in their relationship. So yes, we do have bad role models, but we also have good role models. And we are intelligent enough to, you know, to come up with conclusions that, hold on a second, now that I'm a grown up, now that I have a better understanding about life, I understand that this is not the right way to go. So let me fix it then. Let me do the right way and do what you're supposed to do and not keep using that as an excuse, you know, to go about and, and misbehaving perhaps <laughs> in relationships. And sometimes you have been in a relationship and it didn't work because you followed what you have learned from these references. So it's time for you to look for a different reference. And people who are happy in love are those who follow intelligent love. And this is what the show is about. Hello, our YouTube viewers. We are the presenters of the Love Talk Show. I am Rafa. And you know who I am. <laughs> Look. <laughs> And we are here to um, encourage you to share the, the, this, this channel um, with uh, your friends, your family members, invite them to watch our, our shows because you know, our desire is to help couples and singles do better in their relationships or future relationships. So um, subscribe to this channel, share on your Facebook page, share the link with, with everyone you know so that it can learn intelligent love. Also, leave us our comments and your questions. My life growing up and uh, as a teenager, so I used to see my, my dad also in my house drinking was something normal for my parents to do. Obviously, they wouldn't accept for us to do it, but it was something normal for us to see. And um, so, but I, inside of me, I always thought I wouldn't want to date anyone who, who drinks because uh, I, di I did have experience with some family members, uh, some kind of, you know, problems with drinking. So I, I didn't, I, I already saw what drinking caused in, in a, in, within a family. So I always had that in my mind. I don't want anyone, you know, I don't want to date someone who drinks. And so I had, I kept that for myself. And as I, I grew up, I became, I developed these uh, big insecurities inside of me uh, because, because of what I, I've mentioned. As, as my brother, you know, came into the family, 
I, I started to compete. So this this idea of competing for someone's attention was was very like deep within me. So as I grew up and my friends were like, you need to start dating, you need to do this. I was like, no, <laughs> I was always that one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay, you know, I don't want to get into a relationship. I want to study. I was focused in my, in my studies and, and that's, that's how I was a teen, as a teenager. I never went like out to parties. I never went I just stayed at home basically with my family and my, my brothers. We used to we used to be very I used to be very quiet if I can say that as a, as a teenager. I, I was never like a, a party person or anything. So Italia was my first serious boyfriend if I can say that because in school you would have those people you would call, Oh yeah, he's my boyfriend but you know, it's not but as in as a relationship, yeah, he was my first relationship. So and it was very, it started off in a very wrong way, if I can say that. And and because uh, we, I was here in the UK and he went to study in the United States. So we, we had this friend in common where, um, yeah, he, he made us talk like on, online. So we were there chatting. I was like, no, I'm not gonna talk to him. So it was kind of this situation. So we had a long distance relationship. We started like this. We, and I thought, you know, this is not gonna end anywhere. So it was just my way of, you know, when you, when you are young, you just like having fun. Yeah, no, nothing's gonna come out of it. But then as as we were speaking, because what, 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 what is, um, common even nowadays is that people start to engage even online thinking there is no feelings attached but it's, 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 it's the opposite because the more you, you um, search the more you get to know that person in, in, a, in, a, in a way you are if you that those inform if, if the information that you, you're getting for yourself you know, it's, it's it's somehow relevant to your life. You are gonna engage in that in that um, situation in, in, in a you know and involve your feelings in, in that situation. So here we go again. <laughs> Let's online talk online dating, yeah. online relationships. Let's so, go on that subject once more. Uh, which is a current thing, right? A yeah. current trend. And it's I mean, we, there are so many layers there. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people may think, oh, why are you so against it? Um, don't you think we can find someone on the other, you know, on the other side of the planet and so on and so forth? That, that could happen. I'm not saying it could. However, there are a tremendous amount of traps there. Yeah. And we've seen this, this kind of things happening over and over again and people getting uh, disappointed and, and hurt. It's because, look, you go, you are on Facebook. You tell them, go ahead. Yeah, you're on Facebook. <laughs> you, you know, you're familiar with what we're talking about. When you do any kind of relationship online, through messages, through, you can be whoever you want to be because you have time to think on what you're going to write. When we are close and something happened, so yeah. let's say something would happen that upset you. I see yeah. your reaction because one thing that you really can't fake is reactions mm -hmm. because you don't know what's coming. So when it comes, your reaction shows who you really are. When you're are. talking to someone face to face like we're doing here right now, you're more spontaneous. There's no way to pretend. I mean, you can't try, but I'm going to catch or later. that. I'm going to be able to pinpoint that you're being, you're being fake or pretending or I don't know, but it's very hard. So behind the computer screen, as she said, behind a computer screen, you can be whoever you want to be. You can say whatever you, you, you want to say. And not only that, I mean, it, it, we're talking about a relationship. Mm. Relationship. Relation. You have to relate to the other person. How can you relate to someone that you across never the seen. globe you've never seen, you've never met in person? And um, I mean, you may, you may talk a few times on, over, I don't know, Skype, uh, Facebook you may even Messenger, meet sometimes. And so on and so forth. Yes, but you need to meet that person from time to time. See what that person is. As we said here right now, when you when you talk to that person, looking into that person's eyes, you are able, you know, to you know screen that person, mm. see what that person is, if that's the one or not. So 
I mean, we are not saying we are completely against, but we are saying that it should be avoided. It should be avoided because we know that in order for a relationship to work, both men and women must meet. They must see each other. They must have ex some sort of experience. They must spend time together. What kind of time you spend online? Okay, we, yeah. we, 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 we spend uh, three hours talking on the, over the phone or two hours on Facebook Messenger. It doesn't matter. The amount of time doesn't matter. Because you don't see the person in different situations. Yes. It's always the same situation. You are behind the screen, he's behind the screen. So you can't, if, if when you are having a close up relationship, sometimes you're deceived. Sometimes it's hard. Imagine online. It's so easy mm -hmm. for you to be deceived. It's so easy to deceive. And I don't think a person who is after a good relationship, a lasting relationship, that's what they want. To spend months of their lives and then realize, oh yeah, that person is just lying. So it's not that it can't work. It's just that it makes it harder to work than when you have the person close to you. That's right. So there you have it. So that's what happened. We started to get to uh, getting to know each other. And we thought, I thought in my mind was something just normal. But when you decide to know someone, that information will have an impact in your life. And that's what happened to me because I used to think I liked someone else. So when I started talking to each other, because we used to speak so much on the phone, right? And online, eight hours, right? We used to speak. More yes, <laughs> more than eight hours on the phone. So there was a lot of things. There were many things that we related to each other. There was many, many things. So then that's how the relationship started, how we developed feelings for, for each other. Uh, we, need, we need space. Everybody likes space. Uh, I mean, I like to have my time, my space. I believe you, you also like to have that Most time. Most definitely. Um, I understand that we, when you are in love, <laughs> you want to talk to the other person all the time. But it, it's suffocating sometimes yeah. uh, without meaning, without knowing. Mm -hmm. Because you need time to miss the other person. And also you need content <laughs> for conversation. <laughs> Otherwise you run out of content. Eight hours. I can't stand that, honestly, I don't know how they manage that. 24 hours, let's say six you sleep, eight you talk, what else? It's like, don't you do anything else during your day? No, we don't know if they talk during the day or, or at Maybe night. Maybe they didn't sleep, yeah, it's true. Yeah, so, I mean, is it evil to do that? No, it's not evil, but, I mean, as, as I just mentioned now, you need, you need to give a break to miss the other person yeah. and, and also go about your life. You know, have a life yes, outside because uh, that means you work and then you go to the phone and spend eight hours and you sleep and you go to work or study and you go to the phone so you live it's an addiction almost mm -hmm. it's an addiction you are addicted to to the other person so talking to to the other person at length is not a, is not a problem i mean um i don't remember talking to rafa uh, hours on end not at all it was like was, yeah. Also because I, I couldn't stand being over the phone. And by the way, in our time there, there was, was no, no, no cell phone <laughs> and messages, uh, you know. we, no, no, no chat groups, no apps to uh, chat uh, to chat. Uh, we had to use the, the, the pay phone, right? But anyway, uh, today we have this facility. But you know, learn how to let the relationship flow, you know, see what's gonna happen. See what's gonna happen. Don't, don't, don't try to make everything happen and push and put pressure and suffocate. No, give time, let it flourish. See what's gonna happen next. See where that relationship is going to. So that, um, you know, uh, uh, you can enjoy it. And also- and, 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 uh, Yes, but, but it, by the way, we're gonna see later on, things didn't work quite right for them. They You're gonna see it in, lot, the, in, the, in the next few few segments. Though they spend a lot of time to, uh, talking, I mean, it somehow backfired in the field. It didn't help them on. solve the problems that they had later on. And it's like this: when you, 
for example, we didn't have this facility of being talking, messaging. So we really valued the time that we did talk. So it helps you value the relationship, value each other. But if you do something a lot, after a while, it's like, Ugh. you lose so interest. That's, you lose interest. Even he says, sometimes she would, um, he would say later on, she, she would text and he's like, I'm not going to reply. Because it's, it's too much. Too much too so much. that's bad for a relationship when you talk a lot. It's nice when you have some space, you miss each other. So every time that you do talk, it's special, it's nice. That's right. So we're going to go for a short break right now. And when we come back, we'll continue with Etiandro and Lissandra's story. Stay with us. Do you know what intelligent love is? Ah, but you can find out on our site. It's lovetalkshow.tv. Many people, they struggle in love, in their relationships. They keep losing their hearts, their feelings, and everything always goes to waste. So if you want to learn to love intelligently, that's the place you should visit, lovetalkshow.tv. We also have our Facebook page, our Instagram page, Love Talk Show. So visit us. I just agree with everything she said. That's how the relationship started, how we developed feelings for, for each other. And to the point that I traveled to the US as a, for, for my holidays and, and yeah, and we met face to face. We didn't just leave it as, you know, something online that we, we you know, we, we actually gave the, the next step and met each other face to face. When I started in speak to Lissandra, because the problems that I had in Angola with my parents, they decided to send me to America. It was the <laughs> point of uh, going home drunk. I was 18, 17, so I started to drive. So therefore I was afraid of me having a bad accident or die. And because of uh, I was drunk in clubs, I used to fight a lot. I had a lot of problems in the street. I was so ready to fight that if I was in the street, car in front of me, and I need to pass it, the guy is just stopped there, I, I was ready to leave my car, go to the right car, and fight with them in the street. So they knew about this situation. They knew that I was like, so like, without control, especially when I was drunk. They was afraid someone could kill me, or I, had, I can have like a bad accident. So they decide to, as soon as I finish college, they say, okay, you're not gonna stay here for university. So we're gonna send you to America. Cause my old brother, you live in America. So that's why they sent me to America. When I arrived in America in 2006, I think, was, I was there studying, doing English and stuff. So when, then I started to speak with Lisandro in 2007, eight, more or less. End of 2006. Yeah. Something like this. <laughs> and of course, they send me out of the country, think the problem will be solved. But it was worse because in Angola I used to drink, party, but hiding from them. But in America, it was only me and my brother. So I started drinking at home normally. I started going out because my brother didn't say, okay, you don't have, don't go out, stay home now. He just told me, be careful. And it became worse. So I made friends there. I started going out, drinking again. Same problem again, or worse than Angola. Until the point it was too much, then I started to have a problem with my old brother as well. Because I used to arrive late. He told me, okay, you have to be home, for example, 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. I used to arrive 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So he got family already. He was uh, with, uh, with the wi his wife and my niece. So because he was worrying about me, because I was, I'm the youngest, and my parents, my parents told him, listen, take care about your brother, because his life here in Angola is crazy. So we want him like in control. So make sure he's gonna study and be calm. And it was worse. I didn't listen to my old brother. So I started fighting with him. Like no physical fight, but call names, no respect at all. He told me to do something, I didn't listen to him. He said, you have to be at home at this time. I say, I do whatever I want, it's my life. I was like that. One guy gave me her email, it was an email. Friend, yeah. yeah, a friend of us gave her email. He said, oh, you can talk to her, she's my, 
she's my family and she's a she's a nice lady she's a nice lady and of course I was in the crazy world I said okay so she's no more so let me see what happened even though she's not here in America but why not talking to her and then I started uh, speaking with, with her like online chatting on uh, Skype or uh, in that time yeah so that was the moment that we got so close because we used to speak every single time online and then on the phone for hours, let's say for 10, nine hours a day, every single day. And even though I was in that crazy environment, I saw something different in her, even though she was not close, but it's okay. So all the women that I'm dating, they are like, they're easy, but in her, even though she was like different, I mean, uh, far away, I couldn't see some personality that I couldn't find in the other woman. So that, that, that was the thing that caught my attention. It was very hard because um, obviously you, wouldn't, you, you don't know what the other person's doing. It's not like you, you are 24 seven with, with, if you are dating someone in the same country, let's say, but you, um, it's even worse that sense of being so far away and there is, there is not even a way for you to find out what, what the other person is doing. Or if, if, let's say, oh, let's meet up here, you know, to, to, to see you. There wasn't that at all. So there was a, a very big um, sense of not trying to trust, but at the same time, there was no structure to trust anyone because there was not enough um, not that there was not enough information, but there is that big gap in long distance relationship, obviously, but you know, that caused a lot of problems because I was already insecure from my um, past and my childhood and stuff. So I, I had that insecurity already, which aggravated even more in being in a long distance relationship. I did know about Etiandro's um, lifestyle. I did not know how bad it was because when we started speaking, it was not in America for a long time. So he used to stay home at the beginning for uh, for quite a while. So there was, you know, at the beginning there was a lot. He was present, if that, if I could say, if I can say that. Um, but then as time went by and he started to be more acquainted to the country and the language and everything. Then he, he started to, to show a different side of him. Then things started to change a lot. He, would, he wouldn't answer his phone anymore. He wouldn't reply to, you know, we used to send everything, use everything, emails, <laughs> phones. So he wouldn't reply from any, anywhere. So I would just think, okay, he disappeared. <laughs> We are not together anymore. So in my mind, I would always think we're not together anymore because he wouldn't reply at all. So things got so bad that he would not reply anymore. And he, I think he used to think he's, it was normal, right? Yeah, for me it was normal because <clears throat> I grew up seeing those things with the friends, uncle, people like older than me. For me it was normal, it was a normal life. That's the way it should be. That's the way men have to behave. If you, don't do, if you don't do this or that, you're not a man. So that, that's the mentality outside. At the beginning, I wasn't faithful to Lissandra because it was no way. Because my, in my mind, I was with same mentality from Angola and we was in a different country. So at the beginning, it was no uh, faithfulness at all from my part. Sometimes I didn't reply to her because when she used to call me, I was already with a friend drinking or party. And I knew if I uh, answered the phone, I would be in trouble because she would start to argue with me and say, what are you doing there? Go home, because I need to speak with you. So because I was in that kind of environment, I, will, I used to like, I said, no, if I answer the phone now, I'm in trouble. So I'm not going to answer anything. I'll be quiet. Changing places, uh, houses, what else? Countries, partners. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the solution. Mm. One of the things that we, we, we teach people when they come to talk to us, uh, and by the way, you can find more of that on our website, lovetalkshow.tv. You get um, some amazing stories and some 
um, some of our comments there on similar topics. Um, it's all about the person first. Mm. Because you see, he moved from one country uh, by, by, by his father's order, right? Yeah, his parents. His parents, thinking that he would become a better person, living with his brother. <laughs> if I go to live with my brother or my sister, I mean, it's freedom. You know, show Everything time. goes. Show yeah. time. So, but anyway, it backfired. He did the work, he, he became worse. Because when it's in you, you are carrying that baggage, you have to deal with that. Mm. Because no matter where you go, you carry that baggage with you. So it's not about moving houses, neighborhoods, changing jobs, partners, you name it. It's about you working on yourself so that you can then uh, um, see better results, better fruits of all the things you do. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're gonna remain the same person and you're not gonna only keep messing with yourself, but you're gonna start messing with people around you because those around you, wherever you go, they will, they will also be affected by that. Yeah, and you, you don't get what you want, which is to find love, to find happiness. And you blame others, you blame the place, you blame everything but you when in fact the intention of the parents were good of we course understand we're genuine but that's not the way to go right so let's continue so from being a quiet person who didn't used to like to go out to clubs i used to hate clubs i used to you know not even drink so because he was doing that i said okay now i'm gonna be the same so he feels the same pain i'm feeling so I wanted to pay back. So then it was another side of me, like, you know. So I started to do the same, drinking, dating other people. I started to, um, you know, to have friends as well. As, as many friends as I could find in the club, I would f take pictures, post online, to show him that I was also, you know, living the life, like, you know, I was living the life as well, so I didn't need him. I always wanted to show him that I didn't need him to be happy. Another huge mistake people make when it comes to relationships, payback. So the person did you wrong and you say, you know what, I'm going to pay back. I'm going to do the same as he's doing because I want him to feel what he makes me feel. So they want to fix <laughs> something that is broken but br by breaking it mm -hmm. more. So the person was wrong, but you also decide to do wrong. How can, how can the outcome of that be correct, be good, be positive? So he was, you know, doing whatever he wanted, wasn't giving her attention anymore. And she said, you know what, I'm also gonna do the same. Problem is, you can do that, but it's not gonna give you what you want. By, by doing what he did, hurt her. So she felt hurt. Now she wants to do that to hurt him. Now we have two people hurt, which equals to what? Healing. <laughs> Happiness. Never. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So, but once again, it, it's, it's, it, it's what we are always mentioning here. It's about intelligent love. Intelligent love. What she did was uh, 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 an action moved by the heart, by the feeling, the feeling of revenge. You know, he hurt me, he let me down, now I'm gonna hurt him back. It, that's when you act with your heart, with your feelings, with your emotions, you know, thinking straight. Using intelligent love is looking for another alternative, for another route, so you can try and solve that problem. Or move on. Or move if, on. If, if anything, okay, he's hurting me. I'm gonna yeah, separate myself from this situation and not I'm gonna become like him. Yeah, because, because then you're complaining about someone, uh, you're complaining about what that someone did to you and you do that to that person, you're just like the other person. What, what, differ, what, what differentiates you from that person? Absolutely nothing because you're just like that person. The reality was the more I did those things, the, 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 my value, if I can say that about myself, the, my, the way I saw myself was even going lower and lower by the day because, I, first of all, that was not my 
nature to begin with. So, and when I started to do those things, I, I just looked at myself because I always tried to be different from everyone else. My friends used to date, I was like, no, I don't want to date because, you know, I don't think it's right. So I had a very strong mindset in, the, in, in, in those um, values, but then I lost it all because I wanted to pay back because I thought, okay, if he's doing these things, I need to do it as well because it seems that there is some kind of value in, 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 in going out, clubbing, drinking. So if you don't do that, you are no one. And then I had my friends also motivating me. Oh, okay, he's doing that. Yeah, let's do it as well. So we would gang up and, you know, yeah, it's the payback. Let's take these pictures and post. So it was, so I started to get that mentality as well for myself. I would try to find all the attention to cover up the gaps that he was leaving. Because uh, my, you know, it was the sun of my planet. My, my whole world, you know, was Etiandre. If I was going out, it was because of Etiandre. If I was drinking, it was because of Etiandre. If I, if the, what I wore was because of Etiandre to call his attention. Everything, <laughs> everything was about him. So although I wanted to show so bad that it wasn't about him, but yeah, the more I tried, the more I showed him that I needed him in my life. So. <laughs> One of the things we teach people is to love themselves first. Uh, and this is not being selfish. Mm. You know, loving yourself first doesn't mean you put yourself above everybody else, you don't care about people around you. No, of course not. Nevertheless, doing what, what she did, you know, she said that he was her son. The her son of her the planet. The son of her planet. She went even deeper. <laughs> Um, what does that mean? That means that she was putting him first. When you do that, you put all your dependence on the other person. All, you know, you bet everything. It's almost like your life is in that person's hand. So anything that that person does, anything that that person says, will hurt you, will disappoint you, mm -hmm. you let you down. And that's when, you know, you get hurt, disappointed, frustrated, because you bet everything, you forgot about yourself, yeah. you ignored yourself first, and you made that person the son of your planet. Like she said. said, it's it even in marriage, even when you get married, your, the other person, he is not my life. He's part of my life, a big part of my life, but he's not my life. When you make the person your life, then what happens when, if that person goes away? What happens to your life? If, if that person is your life. And, and, so. and if you do that, you are gonna uh, start accepting, or, or not accepting, but obliging to certain things that you don't really you like, yeah. just to keep me. Mm -hmm. Then you belittle yourself, you diminish yourself. Um, you, don't be, you become the so famous uh, doormat. And the problem with that is when you have someone like that, that you, you know, I am, I am his life. You take it, usually you take advantage of it. Uh -huh. You have everything your way because you know you can do whatever you want. He's not gonna complain. He's not gonna go anywhere because he depends on you. So it's not healthy in any relationship. Nobody should be the son of your planet. So as we told in the beginning of the program, um, learning with your own mistakes make you smart, but learning with the mistakes of others make you wise. And that's what I believe you've been getting from Etiandre Lissandra's story in which we have learned quite a, a few things today. So we're going to go for a short break and after the break we'll come back with the conclusion to today's topic. Stay with us. Hello everyone, we are here to invite you to our Love Talks seminars every Thursday at 8 p.m on the address that you can see here at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also find more details on our website, lovetalkshow.tv. Um, we, you find events throughout the year. They are all free, um, you, where you're going to learn a lot about relationships. Um, you know, singles and couples are invited. Our, our desire is to share with you a little bit of what we've been through and also, you know, help you uh, with prayers, with advice, with counseling, uh, down-to-earth teachings in which will help you become a better man, a better woman, 
a better husband, a better wife, and see, you know, better, better results of your uh, investment when it comes to uh, relationships, okay? Every Thursday, 8 p.m., Love Talk Live on this address here that you see at the bottom of your screen. So learning with Etiandro and Lissandra's mistakes uh, makes you a wise person. <laughs> Right. Basically, yeah. Basically. Obviously, the, 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 the story is not finished yet. We will continue with their story in, the, in our next program, which is the second part of their story. But um, there were quite a lot of points here, quite a lot of points covered here today, in which I believe um, can help those who are watching us um, avoid those mistakes, which, you know, some may consider silly, but you know, they can lead to, uh, to huge problems in the future. And the thing is, many people think, many people, people who come to talk to us, they think, I am in a wrong relationship, or I have, had the, uh, I have not been lucky in love because all the relationships that I have had, they were not successful. And they don't understand that it's small things like that. It's, it's small mistakes like that that stops them from getting a healthy relationship. They keep searching. It's, I have to find the right person. It has to be the right person, the right moment. You know, I have to be in a good moment in my life. That's why it didn't work. When it's not, it's just adjustments. Sometimes it's just adjustments they have to make. And the nice thing about <laughs> uh, Lissandra and Etiandra's mistakes is that they can be applied to both single mm -hmm. and married. So for example, one mistake um, some people who are married make is to suffocate each other. You know, I want his attention, I want him to understand me, I want him to talk to me, I want him present in my life. Where, we, where are you? Sometimes jealousy. So they want so much to be with each other all the time. So that goes for singles and, and married people they suffocate the relationship. So it's things like that, it's small adjustments like that that make all the difference in the long term. And, 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 and this is the reason why we, we, we are, I don't know if our viewers have noticed, we are stretching the stories a bit more lately because, you know, it, it means that we don't have to go through those things ourselves because wise are those who learn with somebody else's mistake with the mistake of others. So, uh, you know, we, we've been trying to digest as much as possible these stories here. So you, you can learn something with them and avoid them. We all make mistakes, no doubt about it. We, we, we are not perfect. However, we can avoid many of them. We can avoid certain, of, of certain mistakes uh, in a relationship, for example. Those who are in a relationship, either dating, dating or engaged or married, you know, it's never too late. All one must do is stop and, and use the head, use the intelligent love as we are always talking about and make better conclusions, have a different approach. Those who are single, even better, because you're not in a relationship yet and you're already learning good points that you can mm -hmm. avoid. You know, uh, you know, good points, that will help you, uh, uh, you know, be a, a, a better spouse, a better, uh, you know, partner. Not perfect, but better. Yeah. That's that's the whole purpose. So that's why we we, we wanted to to have this uh, saying right in the beginning of, of the of the show that you are wise when you learn the mistake of others. Not, not not pointing fingers. We're not saying. I mean, they are doing well today, which you see in the next program. But we, we, we like to explore in details what people have been through, what couples have been through, so that we can highlight some points, make people realize, hey, listen, this will not work. Mm. You have to be careful, stop if you're doing that, avoid that, um, don't go with the flow, don't go with the trend, which is the case of the online dating. Uh, because it might not work. So uh, that's the whole idea. 
Because if, if they had the information that we are giving today, back when they started, they would have avoided, or they could have avoided, all these mistakes just simply by knowing how to behave, how to do, what decisions to make, but they didn't know. So that's the great thing about their story. And one thing that I really like about these stories is that when it comes to love, people have this ideal that is just like in movies. All odds against you and still it works. You are very different, but still it works because you were made for each other. And the real, whole world against you. But love <laughs> conquers all. When real stories, real love stories, stories of couples who today have overcome issues, problems, and are happy, are not like in the movies, are nothing like in the movies. And it, it only becomes successful when you learn. Nobody, nobody, and, and this is something that people, they are deceived. Nobody just meets and clicks and they, you know, soulmates, and that's why they are happy. No one who has a great relationship with their partner just happened. It takes work. Good marriages, good relationships, they don't just happen, they are created. Yeah, it's, and that's, as we mention sometimes in our seminars, microwavable relationships. There you go. You know, people want relationships to work just like that. They invest, you know, a lot of their time, a lot of their efforts when it comes to career, uh, business, finances, their professional lives. Uh, they invest a lot of time in their own bodies uh, by getting healthy and fit and so on and so forth. But uh, when it comes to relationships, they are, you know, they don't want that. They want things to work just like that overnight in the blink of an eye, and then boom, they have the, the, the Prince, Prince Charming sitting next to them, you know, the woman of their dreams uh, sitting next to them, when it's not true. And then the relationship, that's, you know, a fantasy, yeah. perfect relationship. No, there are no perfect relationships. You have to work hard, as we mentioned here throughout today's program, you have to adapt, you have to adjust, otherwise it does not work. So um, visit our website, lovetalkshow.tv. Uh, you're gonna find uh, links to our YouTube channel, uh, Facebook page, Instagram uh, account. Um, lots of information, more stories, you know, questions that uh, you know people ask us and they're being answered lately. So feel free to to visit our website, take a look, and, and you know, get some more. Um, you know, content for your love life. Because some people, they might say, you know, my story is different. I, these are not the mistakes that I, I, I think I make. They are different. Or it may be that you make some of, you have been making some of these mistakes and we are here to help you. So just visit the site and get in touch with us. They can even email us at questions at lovetalkshow.tv with your question, with your problem, if you've been struggling maybe uh, to have a successful relationship or in the relationship that you're currently in, things are not working because either he's making mistakes or you are making mistakes, we are here to help you. So get in touch with us. That's right. So this is it for today, friends. we we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Bye. And that's all for today's Love Talk Show. Be sure to tune in next week to learn more on how to love intelligently.